Let's compare the Mac Mini against the Mac Studio. Welcome everybody, welcome and thank you for hanging out today. It is me, Andrew O'Hara, and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss a single video. In this video in particular, I'm comparing two different machines, Apple's M1 based Mac Mini, this tiny little guy here against Apple's, I guess you could say larger big brother, <laughs> the Mac Studio. Now, we're gonna compare both the Mac Studio with the M1 Max as well as the M1 Ultra, but of course, the M1 Max is much closer in price to the Mac Mini. This guy starts off at $2,000, $1,999, while the Mac Mini starts off at $699, so $700 versus $2,000. Still not exactly a close comparison, but as Apple's the lowest end headless Max, it's worth a look. So let's go ahead and dive into this whole thing, and at the end, I wanna know what you guys think. If it helps at all, use the chapter markers down below to skip board to the sections that you care about. Let's first talk about the silicon in each of these machines. Apple's Mac Mini with Apple Silicon only is available with the M1 processor. You can only get the M1 and it comes with an eight core CPU as well as an eight core GPU. There is a seven core GPU of the M1 available, but Apple does not offer it on the Mac Mini. So you get the eight core CPU and the eight core GPU, no matter which one you pick up. The configurations on the Mac Mini are really relegated to just the memory and the internal storage that you choose. The Mac Studio, on the other hand, it has a few other options available. Of course, you have the M1 Max processor on the inside for the starting out base unit at $2,000, but you also have the option to get the M1 Ultra. With the M1 Max chip, you have two different GPU options. So it's a 10 core CPU, but you have either a 24 or a 32 core GPU available. And with the M1 Ultra, two 10 core CPUs and a 48 or a 64 core GPU, just depending on which one you prefer. There are other differences as well with those CPU options. So depending if you have an M1, an M1 Mac, or an M1 Ultra, it's gonna dictate other things. It's gonna determine the number of ports in the machine, the amount of memory that you can have, as well as things like the video engines that are contained inside. So on the M1 Mac Mini, you can support up to two external displays, one over Thunderbolt and a second over HDMI. While it's on the Mac Studio, you can get up to four displays powered by Thunderbolt and an additional fifth display running over HDMI. The four over Thunderbolt can be 6K resolution while your lower resolution is on HDMI. If you're a video editor, there's also additional encode engine and decode engines with the M1 Max and M1 Ultra. The M1 doesn't have anything specific that Apple calls out with video encode and decode engines, but with the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, M1 Ultra chips, they all have dedicated video encode and decode engines as well as hardware accelerated support for Apple ProRes and ProRes RAW. So if you are a video producer, editor, anything like that, you're gonna benefit from the dedicated video engines in both versions of the Mac Studio. There are video encode and decode engines in the M1 Max and double the number in the M1 Ultra. Ultra version. Now let's look at storage configurations. The Mac Mini, it starts off with 256 gigs of SSD storage, but you can configure it all the way up to two terabytes with 512 gigs to one terabyte and two terabyte options available. On the Mac Studio, with the M1 Max, you start off with 512 gigs of SSD storage. Whereas if you pick up the M1 Ultra version, it jumps up to one terabyte starting out. And at a maximum level, you can get eight terabytes of fast SSD storage in either the M1 Max or M1 Ultra versions of the Mac Studio. For memory, Apple does not have user swappable memory. It's soldered to the logic board, which makes it blazing fast, but it means you need to know what you want when you purchase the machine. With the Mac Mini and the M1 processor, you can start off with eight gigs of memory, but it's configurable up to 16. The Mac Studio, on the other hand, it starts off with 32 gigs of soldered memory and is upgradable to 64 with that M1 Max chip. If you have the M1 Ultra, it doubles those. So it starts off at 64 and can go up to 128 gigs 
of unified memory. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the ports on both the Mac Mini here and the Mac Studio. Our Mac Mini starts off with an Ethernet port, a gigabit Ethernet port, but it is upgradable to a 10 gigabit Ethernet port. Then you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, an HDMI port, two USB-A ports capable of five gigabits per second of data, and a three and a half millimeter audio jack. Now let's set this aside and take a look at the Mac Studio, which has quite a few more ports to choose from. So with the Mac Studio, it starts off with four Thunderbolt 4 ports there on the left-hand side, followed by, by a default 10 gigabits per second Ethernet port. So you can get a 10 gigabit per second Ethernet port on either versions of the Mac Studio or the Mac Mini, if that's something that's crucially important to you. Then we have two USB-A ports, again, capable of five gigabits per second of data, an HDMI port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But how these differ even more is that the Mac Studio has additional ports on the front. Mac Mini has nothing on the front of this thing. So the Mac Studio has a few more that are very easily accessible when placed on your desk. There is an SDXC UHS-2 card reader, as well as two Type-C ports. If you have the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio, those will be USB-C ports, capable of 10 gigabits per second of data. Whereas if you have the M1 Ultra version of the Mac Studio, those are gonna be two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports. Both the Mac Studio and the Mac Mini each support Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. So the thing with these machines is they're not close in price, and I'm not pretending that they are. Even if you really spec out a Mac Mini, you can see in this price diagram of all of Apple's desktops, there's still a difference between a Mac Mini adding on a bunch of memory and storage and a Mac Studio, especially if you get into the high-end Mac Studios where they can reach thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. But there are still use cases for each of these machines. Many people don't need the performance of an M1 Max that is found in the Mac Studio. Many will be happy with the M1 found in the Mac Mini. Plus, the Mac Mini is so much more compact. It's roughly like one-third of the height of the Mac Studio, though it does occupy the same footprint. But it, again, depends on what you're using the machine for. And it's kind of cool to see Apple's desktop lineup growing from a Mac Mini to the Mac Studio and even the high-end M1 Ultra Mac, Ultra Mac Studio that's got even more unparalleled performance. There is a little bit of overlap in the use cases of these machines, and I think those people will know the best choice for them. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you have questions, throw them up down below in the comments. If you want to grab either of these machines, I've got links for you and deals rounded up in the description. Otherwise, stay tuned because I got a whole lot more videos coming your way.